Gonzaga cross country makes history, Gonzaga basketball keeps rolling, and we get to know a campus celebrity. All that and more coming up right now on Gonzaga Game Day. Welcome to the December edition of Gonzaga Game Day. Alongside Thomas Gallagher, I'm Kendall Wiedemann. Today on the show, we recap the first month of Gonzaga basketball season and keep tabs on what's going on with the Zags in the NBA. But before we get there, our main story this month is Gonzaga Cross Country, who just completed their best season in program history. Led by head coach Pat Tyson, the men's team placed 13th at the NCAA Championship in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Since Coach Tyson's hire in 2008, the road to the national success has been a long time coming for this program. Here we are, 2022 Cross Country National Championship. And this men's 10K championship race. Well, uh, I think the question of why I was brought to Gonzaga is like why I started teaching junior high out of the University of Oregon in Shoreline Public Schools, teaching seventh and eighth graders, turning down the head job at University of Idaho back when I graduated from Oregon. Junior high, college, what's up? So I, I took, any challenge I take is to make whatever I enter, whatever arena I enter, a better place than it was. The basketball brand was already starting when I came in, and it's, it's, so it wasn't like I'm entering uh, Uncharted territories was was something that was really really special. Uh, so the things were already happening when I came in, in the fall of 2008. Uh, obviously, distance running was not on on the stage. I, my my goal was to to come in and and see if we can take a little bit of that basketball and and elevate our program to a high high level. Uh, we, we had to start somewhere, and and I I, I inherited like 15 guys and 15 gals and let's, let's roll the dice and see what we can do. Let's make them better than they are. And, and you know what? All those kids, they maximized their ability. They were the, the, the building blocks of what I hope was going to happen as we kept building this thing. They were a team on the rise. I know they never made nationals before I committed, but really could tell this team was hungry and I felt like they've been progressing for so long. You know, we weren't just trying to be at the national meet, but we were trying to assert ourselves there and stay there. And I really felt like it was like a good culture to create like a competitive team that was, you know, really hungry and really wanted to grow. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. COVID comes by and that was definitely interesting. The, the locker room, which was a buzz, uh, before spring break became a vault that was never opened up for about, I don't know, eight months. And so it was a challenge, but I, I, I'm pretty creative. Uh, so I tried to create some purpose. I mean, I would just stay up nearly all night trying to come up with creative ideas to be able to make sure these guys can somehow stay dialed in in a very challenging time. Georgetown makes its 38th appearance overall for the Big East powerhouse with Gonzaga from a story program to a first-timer. Congrats to the Bulldogs on a first-ever national championship. Going over the course the day before, I, like, I said, uh-oh, I hope I prepared these guys because this is a 10,000-meter uh, a steeplechase. I mean, all those hills are barriers, and it's one thing to get through half the race, then you got to do it again. Uh, but all, all uh, most teams at the NC2A meet are taught to go out harder and then position themselves and then use their grit to get through the rest of the race. Well, yeah, we went out, we were like third place and, and then it radically changed. It, it was the opposite of this year. It went from third to fifth to 10th to, and all the way back to 27th. It was very, very tough. 
Yeah, that Stillwater course, uh, it definitely kind of uh, made our program rethink a lot of things with, you know, again, how we prepared physically, emotionally, and we had to keep that, that kind of summer um, energy and training going for, we had to prolong that as long as possible to, to make sure, because we had, we had run well in September before and even, even October, but uh, the, the reality of it is the, the national meet is at the end of November. So um, we had to really kind of prolong that, that summer uh, type training as long as possible. I've always had a philosophy that champions are made during the off, off season. And I always like to end that with, what have you done today to be better than your competitors? So off-season training, even though as coaches, we're not allowed to meet with them, they are allowed to connect with us if they want to, you know, connect and share what they're doing. We just cannot expect them to, we can't reach out to them. So they are all, they know what's happening. When they go to Flagstaff or they go to Park City, and uh, I think that actually helped them greatly, to be honest with you, to perform as well as they did this year and visualize and taste and smell what it's going to be like when we get to Stillwater in late in, in mid-November. Uh, and let's do all the little things that make great things happen. Meanwhile, coming off their best ever performance at the West Regional, Gonzaga is headed to Stillwater in their third straight trip to the national championships. The Zags knocked off number 14 Washington for the second time this year and number 18 Oregon for the first time in program history. To be honest with you, the biggest word I can give at the end of the race was relief. They did it. They said they were gonna do it. But it's easier said sometimes uh, uh, to, to do it than to say it. Uh, and they, they said it and they did it. And it was a very proud moment because uh, it was the greatest team race in Gonzaga history. We don't have to worry about a selection Saturday. We, we are, we're in. And uh, get ready, for, the, get ready for, for something we've been waiting to do for a long time. And get back to Stillwater and, and erase what happened you know, a year and a half earlier. Here we are, 2022 Cross Country National Championship. I know in the huddle, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I think a big reason for that is because I was really trusted that like we put the work in, you know, physically and mentally. Like I really trusted where everyone was at. Like everybody knew what they had to do. Like I said, I trusted everybody that they were going to execute on that day. And I, if anything, it was just reassuring everyone like, hey, we've been working all season for this. Like we just came off a really good race at regional. It's like we're prepared and we're going to do really well today. And there wasn't a whole lot to say because I think everybody knew that. Yeah, I'm really proud of like not just how I did with the whole team. Like I think when we finished, it didn't feel like immediately anybody was like, oh, I just had an insane race. But everybody did their job, you know, and I'm really proud that um, as much as I wanted a little bit more individually, I feel like I really helped the team and did what I need to do. Uh, I didn't take any crazy risks that could have hurt the team. So I feel like being more than anything, just being a piece of what we did as a team is really what I think about with that race. And that's something that's really special for me. Uh, we were a resilient team, and I think the national meet was a reflection of how resilient and how patient we were too. We, even though we knew that uh, there were a couple results that didn't really reflect where we were at, we, we always knew something uh, greater was coming, and, and thankfully I think we can look back and, and at, the, at the regional uh, auto qualification and the national result in, in particular and say, yeah, like, yeah, we were ready at the right time. Because so. once you taste it, once you taste automatic birth, three NC2A championships now in, the, in a row, you never want to go backward. Just a week after NCAA championships, Yassine Girmali and James Mawara both broke the indoor 5K record to kick off the indoor track season. Part of what makes the kennel the best student section in the nation is our very own Bulldog Band. They bring the energy for all 40 minutes of every game. One of the members of the band has become a celebrity among students for the performances on game day. We walked around campus and surprised students with the presence of a true icon, the Tuba Man. 
I'm the uh, tuba man. I'm a sophomore here at Gonzaga. I was, it was the middle of January uh, last year. We were playing a WCC team. And I asked my band director, David Fagg, um, if I could just go down and dance for everybody. Because I used to do in high school um, for our football team. And I just wanted to bring a little bit more fun and kind of lightheartedness um, rather than you know just being another band player. He's like, yeah, sure. And then after I did it the first time, he's like, you have to realize you're doing that from now on. And then now I do it pretty much at every men's game. Um, I'm Carolyn. I'm a freshman and I'm a bio major. What's your favorite part of the basketball games? Um, probably before the basketball team comes out and the band's playing and we're all, really? we're all dancing. Have you heard of the GU Tuba Man? Isn't he an RA? I think he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, so what do you think about him? He goes out on the court and dances. Have you seen him before? Yeah, I love it. You do? You yeah. Like it? <laughs> um, I'm Brady. I'm Austin. All right, so you guys go to a lot of Gonzaga basketball games? Of course. Every single one. Every, yeah. every single one, one this year. And what's your favorite part about the game? The pregame. The pregame. The show. atmosphere. Really? The atmosphere. What about the band? Do you guys like the band? Oh yeah, absolutely. The, band's the band awesome. is what keeps it going. The trombone guy is, is amazing. Like the, the, the guy that comes out, the guy with the, the solos, he solos. Likes. I like that. I like that energy. So, so your favorite guy is the trombone man. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind that. Yeah. What's your favorite part about the trombone? Man? Just he just starts going. Like he, he doesn't he doesn't care. He's just he's just he's just going. You know? No? Oh! Because of Gonzaga's success in basketball over the past 20 plus years, a lot of students here are new Zag fans. I went out to the streets to see how much they know about our historic programs. Hi, my name's Kendall Wiedemann. I'm here with Gonzaga Game Day and we are gonna be doing Gonzaga trivia. Let's see if our Zags know what's going on with our basketball team and other trivia. I have 10 trivia questions for you all. So since what year has our football team been undefeated? A, 1999, B, 1887, C, 1941, or D, 1937? 1887, baby. Uh, I'm gonna stick with, yeah, 1941. 87. I've been undefeated? Yes. Never? Is Ooh. that an option? That is not an option. There is a correct answer. 1999. 1941. Amazing, that is correct. How many times has the Gonzaga men's basketball team won the WCC tournament since 1999? A, 17, B, 14, or C, 12? I'm gonna say 14. 14? 17. 17. Good job, that is the right answer. How many times has the women's Gonzaga basketball team won the WCC tournament all time? A, 7, B, 10, C, 8, or D, 3? Let's go seven. Seven? Maybe. Seven? 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 Yeah. Seven? Which one was eight? C. C. Okay. The answer is ten. Who is the only two-time All-American in Gonzaga history? A. Drew Timmy. B. Josh Perkins. C. Adam Morrison. Or D. John Stockton. John Stockton. <laughs> Want to go with John Stockton, perhaps? Yeah. Sure. Sounds Maybe. great. We'll go. <laughs> what? What was the second one? Sorry. Josh Perkins. Josh Perkins. Josh Perkins? Oh, really? Final yeah, answer? Yeah, final answer. It is Drew Timmy. <laughs> I know. I got to get one at least. Now, who is the first Gonzaga player to record a triple-double? A, Joel Ayayi. B, J.P. Batista. C, Anton Watson. Or D, John Stockton. John Stockton. John Stockton. I knew that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Ayayi? Yeah! Okay. okay, yeah, you really know your basketball. <laughs> what breed of dog is our mascot? A, a corgi. B, a pug. C, a chihuahua. Or D, a golden retriever. Um, pug? E, neither of them. It's B, right? What was the, the bulldog, right? Yeah. It's B, a pug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, this is this is wow, hard. I, I think I might go with pug. <laughs> hey, I've got every oh, single one wrong. <laughs> so what are we? We're the bulldogs. All right, good answer. Thank you so much for <laughs> participating in our Gonzaga trivia. Thank you. Time to turn the tables on you, Kendall. Here's a trivia question for you. How many Zags are currently playing in the NBA? 
great question, Thomas. Um, Come on, you got it. <laughs> let me think about that for a minute. I'm going to say 12. Ooh, a little high there. It's nine, but oh. that's a good effort. You know, I actually was kind of close. I'm kind of <laughs> surprised. <laughs> In our Alumni of the Month feature, our own Nazar Wad sat down with Gonzaga Class of 2019 alum Kendra Andrews, who now covers the NBA for ESPN. They talk about current Zags in the NBA and what it was like to cover Gonzaga when she was on campus writing for the Gonzaga Bulletin and The Athletic. So, Kendra, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about the Zags that are in the NBA currently, right? Mm -hmm. As we know that recently Mark Few has been able to get a lot of guys into the league and drafted high as well. So I'm just going to say a name to you and then you can say it back. Uh, okay. Say one word back, uh, just any response. Okay. Right. First up, Brandon okay. Clark. What, one word. Mm. Oh boy. I, um, a athletic, a like athleticism. Mm. Yeah. 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 Kelly Olynyk. Breaking out. kind of, That's like technically two words, but I'll put a hyphen in it to make it okay. one because I feel like this season he's like continue he's I know he's been in the league for a while but he's continuing to like I think he's playing his best that he has in, in a long time um this season yeah um Rui Hachimura mm. honestly kind of like an icon um just of how big big he is you know obviously he was huge at Gonzaga but in Japan and stuff and and it's out of the players to come from Gonzaga, I think that he's probably one of the most like worldwide recognized, recognized mm. ones. Yeah. One of the recent favorites, Jalen Suggs in mm. Orlando. He's made a couple of big buckets recently for them yeah. as well. I, I just two words again, but like crazy potential, right? Like I think that entire Orlando team has some really exciting young pieces, obviously with Paolo Boncaro and, Jalen and stuff so I think that he he could be a, a really exciting young player sweet another person that recently came out Chet Holmgren he's not playing right now but are there things that you've heard about him possibly nothing I've heard but I, I you know I one word for for Chet I think is also potential right um I think how he comes back from his injury is going to be really big I'm curious I guess one thing that is curious for him to watch is going to be his strength. Um, he's obviously so tall and long, but it's very thin and maybe his bones are a little fragile and maybe that has kind of led to the injury that he suffered. So I'm interested to see how he gets more, gets more strength, but still immense potential. Mm. All right. Um, Corey Kispert. Mm. Shooter. Yeah, for sure. And somebody who's made another clutch shot recently over LeBron James, actually, Andrew yes. Nemhart. <laughs> yeah. I guess clutch for now, right? <laughs> was, that was awesome to see. All right. And then going over to the WNBA side, Courtney Vandersloot, the Chicago mm -hmm. Sky. She's a champion, yeah. assist record holder, and she's yeah. going to get her jersey retired here at Gonzaga when yeah. she's free. But what do you, any words to describe her? Yeah. I mean, come, like, legend, goat. I mean, you just listed off all those accolades, and I was thinking about it earlier today. Like, beside, outside of John Stockton, I think that she is the most successful basketball player to come out of Gonzaga. Um, so give her all, all the flowers. Absolutely. All right, getting over more to you, because you are our alumni of the month, could you quickly summarize what you did after you graduated from Gonzaga? It's been yeah. uh pretty quick and successful journey for you I feel like so far thanks um yeah so I graduated from Gonzaga in 2019 um and directly out of college I moved to Denver and covered the Denver Nuggets um <clears throat> for the athletic um and I did that for about a year and a half so from June 2019 to January of 2021 um, and in January of 2021, I moved out here to San Francisco to start covering the Warriors uh, for NBC Sports Bay Area at the time. Um, and then after a year at NBC Sports, I got hired by ESPN to take over their Warriors coverage. Um, and so I've been here for <clears throat> about just shy of a year, um, 11 months at, at this point. So yeah, it has been a quick, <laughs> quick journey. <laughs> 
Going back a little bit to Gonzaga, do you have any favorite moments from reporting over here and just getting experience at Gonzaga with the Bulletin or with athletics? Yeah. I mean, I think the best thing about Gonzaga, at least for like journalism students at Gonzaga is, and I, I, I don't know what it's, the the media landscape is there now, um, but at least when I was there, you know, the Zags, they went to the, the championship game my sophomore year. Um, but bes besides that, you know, they made it to the final four elite eight and stuff but it's such a small market that there were there was the spokesman review there was the local tv stations but there were no other reporters there and so as a student journalist you got so much access to one of the best programs in the country and i learned through talking with other like student reporters if you were at any of the huge you know blue blood or uh, programs around the country, you know, like Kentucky or UNC or Duke, you don't get that access. You know, everything is press conference setting. Everything is very like just controlled. And at Gonzaga, you just, you had so many opportunities to cover uh, the team. Um, so I think that is like huge as far as favorite moments. I mean, the NCAA tournament was covering, covering that, covering the WCC tournament, I think was a huge learning experience. Um, again, take kind of take it for granted that you get those experiences year in and year out because you know Gonzaga is gonna gonna make it. But um, that was great. Covering a coach like Mark Few was like a great learning experience. Also, if you're gonna go cover the NBA in the future, having a coach like Mark Few to work with um, was was awesome. One more question, just to kind of come full circle. Has there been a Gonzaga moment while you've been in the NBA? Maybe you've seen, seen a Zag or like just saying, hey, what's up? I'm just noticing yeah. somebody's a Zag. Yeah, I think well, I mentioned that I had gone to Japan for preseason and those Warrior games were actually against the Wizards, which obviously Rui and, and Corey play for. Um, and Rui and I knew we lived in, the, we both lived in Corkery um, my sophomore year, his freshman year. And so we'd end up walking to class together, like, all the time just because we'd leave at the same same time and throughout I think I, I, I think that my first year out of college was his rookie season I want to say that those lined up and so I remember like it started when he would come to Denver for a Nuggets Wizards game and we'd say hi and stuff and then when we were in Japan this past season I got to do a sit-down interview with him and it was that was a kind of cool full circle moment because I remember when his freshman year, my sophomore year, like he, his English wasn't great. He asked like help ordering food or like, I, you know, what is, what is this philosophy class talking about? And then there we were in his home country, um, you know, in Tokyo talking about just his journey in basketball and stuff. So I think that was, at least for me, that was a, that was a pretty cool moment for us. Thanks again to Kendra for taking time to talk with us. We move now from past Zags to the current Zags. Both the men's and women's basketball teams are off to strong starts this season. The men have played their toughest non-conference schedule in school history and currently sit at 8-3 and three with a huge game coming up against Alabama. Their home winning streak sits at 71 games, tied for the longest streak of the modern era. The women have battled injury, illness, and adversity the last three weeks and picked up huge wins over Louisville and Tennessee. In the Bahamas, their win over number six Louisville was the highest ranked win in program history. They are now nine and two on the season and sit inside the top 25. From an aircraft carrier to the Bahamas to Portland and everywhere in between, let's take a look back at the first month of college basketball season. San Diego, California, where we are promised a unique basketball experience here today as the second-rate Gonzaga Bulldogs will renew their rivalry with the Michigan State Spartans. It is the Armed Forces Classic here on the USS Abraham Lincoln. And welcome to a very special event that is about much more than just basketball. I mean, this, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity.
like they did with normal, they refused to go away. No. They just kept chipping away, chipping away. Gonzaga comes back and wins it. Last episode's top moments were great, and I'm sure they will be tough to beat. But we have a new set for this past month, and with basketball season in full swing, we have a sweep in the top five. Starting at five, the Zags taking on the Boilermakers in Portland at the Phil Knight Legacy event, and Drew Timmy denies the seven foot four Canadian center Zach Eady early in the game versus Purdue. At number four, 1.3 seconds left on the clock. Callie Stokes inbounds to Kaylin Trong, who pulls up from beyond half court and splashes the 55 footer. Rolling into number three, Zags taking on Kentucky in the Spokane Arena with 12,000 plus going crazy as the hometown kid Anton Watson splits the defenders, finds some space in front of him, and brings down the hammer in front of the temporarily relocated kennel. And at number two, Yvonne Ejim, voted preseason all WCC first team, dominates going 13 for 17, dropping a career high 32 points. Seven rebounds, three steals, and a block. And at one, Zags honor a true legend in Kelly Olenek, who led the Zags to their first number one ranking and number one seed. Olenek is the first first team All American since Adam Morrison. Kelly currently plays for the competitive Utah Jazz team in the NBA. Olenek will be the first of three Zags basketball legends that will be honored this year. Dan Dickow and Courtney Vandersloot will also be recognized this season. And that will do it for this edition of Gonzaga Game Day. Join us after the new year for more exclusive Gonzaga content. From all of us in the Gonzaga Game Day production crew, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Go Zags! And you know, you know, to have your jersey, you know, that's an honor, especially, you know, beside Mo, John, and Frank. Um, it's a special, special group. And, you know, I can't thank everybody enough who had their hand in this. Once a Zag, always a Zag. Let's go Zags. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's hear it for number 13.